Monday the 13th of July and it's about nine o'clock in the morning and we're in Barlaston just to the south of uh, Trentham near Stoke-on-Trent we uh, we're gonna head off uh, aim for Etruria today uh, which isn't too far it's uh, probably about four hours cruising maybe five um, we decided we're going to stay at Etruria rather than go on to the Calden today because the, the first sort of couple of three miles of the Calden they recommend you don't moor overnight there. So um, rather than rush to get further, we're going to take a nice leisurely day and uh, I think it'll be fairly secure at Etruria. There's lots of boats there and there's also a um, services uh, point so we can deal with the toilet, get some water, do any shopping we need to do. I don't think we need to do any shopping today. Um, so I'm just going to check the oil and water on the engine and then we're ready to go. We've just passed the Wedgwood factory and we've come to this lock which is lock 35 and it's the first lock getting towards Stoke-on-Trent so once we're past here it's Stoke-on-Trent proper and he's just about to leave so so we'll be emptying the lock in a minute this is where the water's going to start to rush out and potentially knock our boat about. Hopefully the skipper's tied it up securely. See how it's moving, bouncing around. It's amazing the force of that water when it gets hold of your boat, you just can't hold it. Not on your own, it's got to be tied up. Now it's just tied up. And you see it's moving again now. Such is the nature of water currents. One minute it throws it forward, and the next it's throwing it backwards. It's quite strange really to get used to. It's about 11 foot drop this uh, this lock. I think there's a series of about three locks now in the next sort of mile and a half and the rise is 50 feet so they're quite deep locks
we're now in the middle of Stoke-on-Trent and we've just stopped waiting to go through Stoke Bottom Lock which is quite a tall lock and the same boat's in front of us again so he's going first and the ladies have just gone to uh, set the lock ready it was full when we got here so it's had to be drained so this is where we are as you can see it's quite grey and cloudy we've had a spot to a rain um, but, uh, I was tempted to stay under the bridge where it's dry but it's stopped raining now this is Osborne Bridge and that's the reason it's called Osborne Bridge is on that sign celebrates the work of Pat and Millie Osborne who fundraised to maintain and restore the canal so this is the other part of canal cruising the urban side to things so this is inside Stoke Bottom Lock and it's quite deep as you can see it must be must be 15 feet it's very deep it takes a lot of filling So this is the first of four locks that take us up to uh, Etruria and it's 25 to 12 now. We were going to stop overnight at Etruria but we're going to be there in the next hour even though the locks are against us. So I think we're going to go on to the Calden this afternoon and uh, get out in the country and stop overnight on the Calden. So this is the next lock up Stoke, only two railway bridges. We've done one bridge, this is the second. It's very nice, she's ringing me. Tell me the lock's ready and I'm already on my way. And I can't get the uh, radio because I'm concentrating on where we're going. Exhibition. Seen lots of those going through Stoke. There's a mile post there that says we are 55 miles from Shardlow. What did I tell you? <laughs> a train.
just moored the boat up at the next lock but there's something down here of interest we passed it as we were approaching but I was too busy uh, lining the boat up for getting off since we're in Stoke-on-Trent two old bottle kilns no longer used of course the area around them has been developed I think these are probably the last two in Stoke-on-Trent I'm not certain on that let's just go around here and have a look there's a sign there might be a oh there's flood lit as well look here we are kilns restored by countryside properties so they obviously developed the land around but there's no uh, there's no board that uh, explains what they were which pottery it was but it's nice that they've uh, retained them in amongst the flats yeah it's quite a smart area this we've just come through a pretty grotty area this is quite smart oh there's a wren just on it <laughs> yeah so they're the bottle yeah they're the bottle kilns I think they might be the last two bottle kilns on Stoke-on-Trent yeah On the ground paddle back for it. And now we're going.
just started to drift back now. And that's looking back down the flight. There's a CRT yard just to the left. We've got to call and get some water. So it looks like I shall be turning right once we get out of the lock. I'll get off actually. We are the Truria Sanitary Station, which is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> Under the beady eye of James Brindley. Just have a walk around the Truria Junction. While we stop for lunch. This is the start of the Calden Canal, which is 17 miles long, I think, and goes up to Froghall. And it was built in 1779. <coughs> As a branch of the Trenton Mersey, Trenton Mersey being completed in 1777. So it didn't take long for the people of the stone quarries at Calden Low to want to connect to the Trenton Mersey to get the stone away. I presume some of the limestone was used in the pottery industry, I'm not sure about that. But uh, that was the reason the Calden Canal was built. And it was built, designed by the engineer of the Trenton Mersey because it was part of the Trenton Mersey Canal. And that engineer was James Brindley, who was a Derbyshire person. And this is the wind in all at the end of the Calden, just before the junction. And this boat's just 
winding around now. So there he is across the water on his plinth. Looking across, out across the junction. James Brindley, canal engineer.
jump when it's the engine room. Wait for the back, okay. It's half past six and we're just moored up for the night. We've been coming from Etruria since about three o'clock, half past two perhaps. And this is the first spot we've found really where we feel comfortable about mooring up for the night. We're just in front of uh, the lift bridge. We've just gone through engine lock and when we got here we were the only ones here but since we've been moored up two more boats have arrived so there's safety in numbers so we feel as though we're comfortable to stay there's a little farm across the uh, canal from where we are so there's people about but the right sort of people but we've seen some fa fairly uh, what shall we say strange sights coming through Stoke on the Colden, the Trent Mersey wasn't too bad, but the Colden we saw one or two uh, various characters that didn't look particularly appealing. Uh, the staircase flight, Sue seems to think the three lads there were were on some wacky backy. So uh, they were all right, but uh, you never know. And we saw a PCSO as well who was patrolling and said that. Uh, he didn't advise people to stop there overnight. Hello. So we've come out of Stoke-on-Trent, I think probably three miles now. And uh, the canal was very windy, very narrow in places. Um, but uh, it's settled down a bit now, so we're going to call it a night, have something to eat. And, uh, and settle down and hopefully tomorrow won't be such a, a late stop. It's half past six now as I say and uh, we usually keep, we usually tied up by about half past four or five o'clock. But we needed to keep going just to, uh, to get to somewhere suitable for an overnight stop. And uh, this is fine, not a problem. So tomorrow we're probably going to have a, a less taxing day. Uh, take it a bit steadier. I've got one or two bits to do. I've lost two fenders in the locks through Stoke, so I've got to replace them. And uh, one or two uh, little running repairs to do, so we'll, uh, we'll take it easier tomorrow.